In today's video, we are going to see if we can grow a few different kinds of plants in kinetic sand. Guys, you might be stuck inside with not enough to do. Well, guess what? We've got a solution for you. Dun, 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 dun. We've got kits and they are available for sale, including some of the ones that have been out of stock for a while, should be back in stock. And they're great fun because so awesome, it's, it's multiple parts. You get the fun of like putting it together, but then you get the fun of using it after it's been put together. It should have everything that you need yeah. included in it. Instructions, how to build it, all the supplies. You don't have to go out to the store and gather them from like six different places. It's just all in one kit. They are available now. Click the link down in the description to get yours today. We've done a few experiments with kinetic sand in the past, mostly making it or boiling it. You casted a gallium face in it. Yeah, that didn't work very well. <laughs> That's all right. We've got a new experiment with kinetic sand today, mm -hmm. and we want to see if it is possible to grow living plants in kinetic sand. We're about to find out. And we've got a few varieties mm -hmm. of that, and uh, we've got some clear cups, which hopefully will let us see if anything is happening like in the sand as yep. it's going on. and. We want to see if it grows. This is going to take a while. We're going to set it up and then kind of run it as a time lapse for a good amount of time. And hopefully we get some sprouting. And with our already alive sprouted plant, hopefully it stays alive and doesn't die. The idea here is that I grabbed some flowers and some beans that are just known for sprouting very, very quickly. In science experiments, uh, you've probably done this in elementary school, seeing how fast you can sprout a sunflower seed or how they grow. They don't need a lot, they're pretty hardy. Uh, and so is a tiny little rose that you can usually keep alive. Pretty simple on a kitchen sink, something like that. We're going to try and remove the soil from around the roots of the rose, repotted basically in kinetic sand. We don't know if the, whatever the blend of kinetic sand is, is going to allow water to transfer through it. We don't know if it's gonna be able to keep the plants alive, if there's any sort of chemicals that may prevent sprouting. And we won't be adding anything other than water. So be it. I don't believe the plants are going to be able to get any nutrients out of the kinetic sand. So we're gonna see how this goes, fingers crossed. What are your thoughts here? I think that the beans will sprout mm -hmm. because I've seen beans sprout in paper towels with water on them. I have no experience with the sunflower okay. seeds, so I'm not sure how that's gonna go, but you say they sprout easily, so and hopefully. pretty fast. We're not gonna leave these until they're fully grown and harvestable. We're just trying to see, will the plant get enough in the kinetic sand to get going and then so with our flower, ones, we'll see if it stays alive. These basically tell me that I want to be planting them an inch down into the soil, and the soil for us today will be kinetic sand, and then within a week to two weeks, the seedlings should sprout from the top. Well, we're going to actually be pressing the seeds to the side of the glass as far down as it tells us to, so we'll actually know sooner. Hopefully we'll be able to watch yes, the seed actually sprout. So two different kinds of beans, two different types of sunflowers, and then these are lychee seeds. We just happen to have those from a previous, previous video. So. Yeah, previous video we just did. So we'll have a couple of these going, and I think we can actually probably put a few seeds in one of these containers, just push them down around the edges. And then, yeah, we'll try and get the soil off of our tiny little Walmart rows. <laughs> I'm also trying not to compact it too much. Kinetic sand, the reason it's so fun and so strange is it's malleable and it gets fluffy, but then you can just condense it down. You've probably seen pictures on the internet of trees that have split sidewalks, or it'll make an entire porch move up because the roots themselves just over time can split and crack houses and concrete and rocks, and it's neat stuff. So I'm not sure that just the pressure of kinetic sand is really gonna keep it down but they're also tiny plants, they're not big trees, so IDK. I feel like we've made a creative mess here. So now it's time to add seeds. These are two different types of sunflowers. This is called the solar eclipse and this one is called incredible. This is going great, let me tell you. Oh, 
Okay, okay. We're just gonna make a moss ball of things. And while it's still nice and loose, not packed together, just gonna let it drip down in so that there's more space for air and water. I don't know how well the kinetic sand is actually going to hold the moisture, which is, like we were saying, you can sprout these beans in a moist, like in a wet paper towel. So it's just kind of a, a chance for us to see how well the kinetic sand is going to hold on to the moisture. That has some water in it. Rose is, again, pretty hardy. My father, who was a, just a hobbyist horticulturalist, which is just a fun thing to say, would be so sad if he knew what I was doing to this poor rose today. But the roots are saturated, which is what you want, and you, for a rose, for something that you can just keep inside, it does need sunlight, so I'll be probably putting this out by the window because it's too cold outside for it, it will freeze. So long as the soil stays mostly damp, but not oversaturated, it's pretty hard to kill a rose. It might not be on the time lapse because it will need more light than the beans and the seeds will, so we'll see, fingers crossed. So our studio is in a basement, so this is about the only window that this is gonna get any light in and not freeze. So we'll check on him and uh, we'll put the plants somewhere a little bit darker and warmer. We let our seeds go and grow for like two weeks pretty much. Did um, we? For the most part. Yeah, the guy looks very unhappy. Yeah. And so I kept adding water. The water was evaporating too quickly, so I ended up putting foil over the cups to help keep the water in, and that made a big difference in how fast it evaporated. It was weird to see how much faster it evaporated out of some than others, and I don't know why that is. There's some mold growing in a couple of them. This one yeah. can see it pretty easily. Like those spots, I'm pretty sure we've just got mold growing on our sands. Let's empty them all out and yeah. see if we have any growth at all on any of Anything. the seeds. I'm just so sad, guys, because like I said before, roses are usually pretty easy to keep alive. Don't let them get too cold, don't let them get too hot. They don't need direct sunlight all the time. Give them water and give them some soil. That's basically it. Uh, this guy, we struggled to keep water in there for him. He would perk up every now and then, but he just wasn't gonna work. And my thought here is maybe that I think you can see just how one He's so dead. And what we've tried to make kinetic sand in the past. You've seen us do this in several videos. Kinetic sand itself, two of the ingredients that we know it has is an ultra fine sand and then something that basically amounts to a type of silicone, which I'm pretty sure isn't gonna be breathable material. It's why it's so much fun to play with and it's stuff that you know it's gonna mold and it's gonna squish in your hands. But it's actually the number one reason that they don't recommend you letting kids play with it alone, you know, smaller children because you don't want to ingest any of it. Even though it's technically non-toxic, it can really mess up your insides because of the fact that it likes to adhere to itself and stick together. You can imagine what that might do in your stomach. For example, I, glass is non-toxic. There you go. But you don't want to eat it. <laughs> Still shouldn't be something uh, in your system. It's going to squish together and cause problems. I'm pretty sure that's what we had happening with our root system here. Water really couldn't get down into any of this guy's poor roots. Neither could air at any point. There wasn't much left. It's all just compounded together. There's still even some moisture, a little bit, but that just didn't have anywhere to go. It kept just compounding down onto itself. I killed the rose and I feel awful about it. You know, I think the little lychee here tried to do a thing and that's as far as he got. But look at this, we've got a bunch of them right here, like nothing, nothing, tiny, tiny, tiny little spit of growth at the end of that. Nothing, nothing. This one I think he may have tried, but then now it's just died. This little part here, it was, I think the brown that I'm seeing is just that he died a while ago. This was probably within the first few days and then just. We had so many seeds and beans that went in and yeah. they grew so easily in the paper towel. Like yep. look at the results we got in the paper towel. And then in the sand, like we got two think, that almost maybe kind of sort of started to grow. I think we suffocated them. It could be. Honestly, I think that's what this comes down to. I is tried that this to even stuff... leave some like open. So it was mm -hmm. just like a channel all the way up and it still just didn't want to grow at all. 
So while this stuff is technically non-toxic, my first thought after seeing what was happening to the rose as it was continuing to wilt even though we were taking care of it was, well, why don't we try maybe a succulent, something that can survive in a desert environment. And then when I was realizing that the sand was just compounding that much and just compressing to the point of there's no space for this to grow anymore. I just didn't want to risk it, which sounds silly because as Nate points out, these are plants and I need to stop feeling bad that we killed a bunch of plants. But I feel bad that we killed a bunch of plants. I really thought these were gonna live. We do wanna try one more thing. We're gonna take some of the remaining sunflower seeds that we have and we're gonna put them in this glass cup with paper towel and we're gonna get the paper towel wet and we wanna do a time lapse and see if we can time lapse them actually growing. Show you guys how think, easy this really is. I think that would be pretty neat. It likes paper towels a lot better than it likes kinetic sand. I'm gonna say it, I mean they, the they. seeds. Look at all of them, they're so happy. We can actually probably take this out and take them with it. There we go. Probably. That guy molded, he's not happy about life. But look at this, this is why we thought that this was going to work so well. They're so happy. They All they needed was a damp paper towel, that's it. Better than the kinetic sand by a long shot. Guys, don't, liked, don't try and grow plants in kinetic sand. I liked in the time lapse, it like pushed <laughs> the foil up off of the lid. Yep, these guys are tough little buggers. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top for the most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.